had uh, uh, people talking about uh, narrow is the way and uh, there are few, few people who find this uh, narrow way the bible is very clear about this way and uh, because many people have never understood how to uh, check if they are they are really on the narrow way you see the broad way is leading people to destruction and that's exactly where many are going you see we are all of us we are in a journey everybody says he's a christian and everybody says i'm a good person and uh, i'm doing this and that and that's and uh, all, all those kind of things but are you really sure if you're on the broad way or are you on the narrow way because the bible tells us that um, the bible tells us in matthew 7 13 enter ye in at the straight gate for wide is the gate okay and broad is the way that leads to destruction and many be uh, and many there be which go in their heart so there are many people going through the broad way but what does the bible say about the narrow way it says straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few be there that find it now why would the, the bible be saying there are few people who find this narrow way how confusing is that way how how confusing how comes everybody's going through the you know the broad way and uh, is it really true that uh, few many people don't know this way churches are full every place is full how can you tell us that uh, <laughs> it's only a few people going through this way the narrow way now one thing that i have to tell you and you have to understand is that uh, the road to heaven like the bible says is extremely small and uh, most people will not find it even those who call themselves christians it will be very difficult for them to find this way now just because you go to church and you do good does not mean that you're going to heaven I know there are people who say, no, but I do good, but uh, I, I, I think uh, I give to the poor. I think I do this and that. And uh, I will just like to ask you one question here. Just think, you get to the gates of heaven and you're eyeball to eyeball with Christ. And he asks you one thing. Why should I let you into heaven? He's there holding the doorknob and he tells you, he just asks you, why should I let you into heaven? What are you going to answer him? I know there are so many people who will answer so many things. Like, for example, there are people who will say, you see, Jesus, you have to let me to heaven because uh, I, I did good. I, 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 I did good. I was a good man. I was a good man. I, I was not the evil kind of people out there in the streets. You see, Jesus, I went to church every Sunday. You see, I love you, Jesus. There are people who will say, I love you, Jesus. The others will say, I was baptized. I gave to the poor and I gave to the needy. I was a charismatic person. I, I, I did all these things, Lord. You have to let me in. But let me tell you, all of those things, all of those things, they are good things. But they don't give eternal life. Okay? All of those things are really good things. But they can't give eternal life. They can't give eternal life. They can't. Now let me tell you, if you really want to get eternal life, you must find the narrow way, which is the way of Christ. You may ask yourself, why are people saying that the, the way is so narrow? But uh, we all love Jesus. Come on, I believe in Jesus. Do you know what the Bible says? Even the devils believe that Jesus is God and they tremble. They believe that Jesus is God and they tremble. Does it mean that the devils are saved? No, they are not saved. That is the broad way to hell. Everybody believes there is someone called Jesus. Even if you ask uh, a drunk man out there in the bars and, uh, you know, people who are uh, 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 beating other people, thieves, anyone, and you ask them, do you know some guy called Jesus who was here 2,000 years ago? They'll tell you, yeah, yeah, I've heard about that guy. I've heard there was a man who, 
who who was here 2000 years ago i believe is there yeah it's true it's very true now does it mean that they are saved no everybody's is on the broad way but very few people are on the narrow way now you may ask how comes you see jesus is the only way to eternity let's pretend this is eternal uh, eternity here here is where god is and this is man you see man has already been separated from god because of sin we have been separated there is this one here and this one here and there's no way you can reach god so how do we cross here and come to eternal life are we going to you know walk out there you can't walk you can't do anything else you can't enter through the window you can't do anything else there's only one way and that way is through jesus christ and this is a good illustration of how Jesus Christ gives eternal life. Do you know something called the cross? The cross of Jesus? What happened at the cross? If you understand what happened at the cross and why it happened, then now you will understand how you can be walking in the narrow way. You see, many people think that uh, because I go to church, because I do all these good things, because uh, I, I associate myself with Christians, because I give to the poor, because I, 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 I. You see all those things? Anything that you're talking about, I, myself, what I've done, I, that one is a true picture that you're, you're in the broad way. You're not even in the narrow way. If you're talking about I did something, I was a good person, I went to church, I gave to the poor, I, it's just the same way like what Satan was saying, I will ascend high above the heavens, I'll be like the most high, I will do this, I, 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 you see all those things that uh, in these prosperity churches are always teaching uh, people, that I, I, I will do this, I am blessed, I am this, I am that, I am that, yes, of course you're blessed, we don't deny that. But those things don't give you eternal life. They don't give you eternal life. You see, you can uh, say that, uh, okay, I know Christ, I know Jesus died, but you don't understand why he died. Now, Jesus did this so that you can be forgiven of your sins, okay? He did this. He shed his life set his life down so that you can be saved and that's the only way you can have eternal life that's the only way you can have eternal life now true acceptance of christ results in a change of lifestyle okay you cannot be a new person living in the old ways okay why because the bible tells us that god has created us as his workmanship, you know, he has created us as, as a, his workers. He has created us for good works. See what the Bible says. See what the Bible says in Ephesians, Ephesians uh, 2 verses 8. See, I want us to go to up to verse 10 and we see this one. For by grace are you saved through faith. Okay. There is no nothing else not works okay you are saved through faith and it is by grace you know grace is getting what you don't deserve so by this grace getting what you don't deserve you deserve to go to hell but you're being saved through faith faith in who faith in the in the blood that jesus shed at the cross and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god so there's no way you can say it is i i you see jesus i did this i did this i was a good man i i i i no it's not about you it is the gift of god salvation is free free gift it is not of works lest any man should boast you see there are people who boast and they say i am this i am that i've done this i'm this and this no it's not of works is not of the good things that you've done it's not about yourself it's not of how giving you've been in the church not about how uh, uh, better you've been it's not about how you've held the poor it's not about how you've built churches it's not about how you've been baptized it's not about how you don't sin it's not about you living sins no 
If it was about you stopping sinning, then you could not even get salvation. It's not of your works, lest anyone should boast. There are people who will say, oh, me I did not sin the whole of this year and I think I'm so clean. No, it's not about your works. For we are his workmanship. Yes, we have been saved by grace through faith. There is nothing of ourselves. But then, after we have been saved, what is the reason why we have been saved? And why is the reason that we are not saved and then we go straight to heaven immediately? We stay here because we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. We have been created for good works. For good works. Okay? Now, do you have good works? You see, good works, they are a representation that your faith was true. If you don't have good works, then it means your faith was fake. It means you are just a fake uh, Christian. Why? See what the Bible says in uh, James, in the book of James uh, 2.17. See what the Bible says. And uh, I know many people come here and they say, no, 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 you say you're talking about works. No. <laughs> Let me show you. Even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead, being alone. There's no way you can say, I have faith in Christ, and then you don't show good works. You can't be the old person. You're still, you know, being evil, doing all the evil things over and over and over. I'm not saying doing... Uh, uh, doing a sin or or so or sinning it means that you're not saved no but if you continue deliberately 24 7 there is nothing which changed you're just always doing sin and sin and sin and sin and you say that you you are saved then your faith must have been dead because you are supposed to be a new creature now a new creature has different uh, behaviors if you take a lizard and today you change it and it is a, 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 it's, a it's an elephant. An elephant and a lizard, they behave differently. Their DNA is different. Everything about them is different. So they cannot behave the same. They cannot behave the same. They are two different, uh, you know, creatures. Look at this. Yeah, a man may say, you have faith. And I have works. You see, there are people who will say, uh -huh, Keith, go on. You, 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 you have works. I have faith. You, you are talking about uh, works. Me, I know I have faith. After I've believed, I can go on and do all the evil things that I want because I know I've already believed. But uh, the Bible says, show me your faith without your works. Okay? And I will show you my faith by my works. My works are going to prove that my faith was real. There's no way you will marry a wife and just put her on a shelf and say, it's okay, I don't want to know anything about her, I don't want to know how she, she feels, I don't want to understand about what she loves, I don't want to understand anything. Let, I've already married her, let, let her just stay in the shelf. You can't do that. You, it is through your works that you are able to know if your faith was real. I, I, I don't know if I'm making some sense. So, you see, repentance is something which is rarely taught in church nowadays. People rarely talk about repentance. Repentance. What is repentance? People are just told, come to church, you know, be a good person, do this and do that. But they are rarely told about repentance what repentance is and how they should supposed to repent you see when mo most people hear the word repentance they think uh you're being told to stop sinning no we're not telling telling you to stop sinning come as you are with your sins and everything that you have the moment you come to christ and you believe in christ because repentance comes from the root word metanoia metanoia means to change your mind change your mind from unbelief to belief. You never used to believe in God. Now you believe in him. Now the moment you believe in Christ. And you put all your trust in him. You have repented. And what happens after that? The Holy Spirit comes inside you. He is sealed inside you. 
And after he comes inside you, he makes you a new creature and he starts working on your good works. Are you seeing where how good works come in? He starts convicting you unto righteousness. Not condemning you and telling you you are a bad person, blah, blah, blah. No, he convicts you. He tells you, come on, you're being saved by grace. Now do good works. You see, repentance is, has nothing to do with stop sinning. And that's why many people get lost and they get confused. And uh, there are so many people nowadays, because of not understanding the word repentance, they brand themselves. You see, I'm a sinner. And, uh, you know, they, they rebel against God and uh, they never even know him in the first place. They're just there and they keep on doing evil things and over and over. And they say, I will come to Christ when I finish sinning. Christ does not tell you to come after you finish sinning. He tells you, come with your sin. He's going to deal with your sin himself. And if you see somebody says uh, who says, uh, you know, I repented. I was, uh, you know, I got saved some time back. And he keeps on going back to the world and, and uh, he has no change. Nobody can be able to see any change in him. There is a big possibility those people who you hear them saying that they are backslidden or you hear somebody as a backslidden, in the first place, they have never been Christians because there is nothing like backsliding. You cannot lose your salvation. So when you hear somebody say, oh, that guy backslid, you see that guy, he, he was a Christian, but he went back. This is what usually has happened. First John, if you hear somebody as backslidden, this is what has actually happened. Let me show you. The Bible says, they went out from us, but they were not of us. You see, the reason you hear they are backslidden, they were not with us in the first place. For if they had been with us, they would have no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that, my, they might be, uh, they, that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. The reason you will hear somebody as you know, back, gone back to the world. In the first place, they had a fake salvation. Fake salvation. You see, salvation is like marriage. And before you marry someone, you have to understand first, what am I getting into? You have to understand that I'm with this person forever and I'm not going out. That's why the Bible is so strict about he doesn't want people to part. He doesn't love divorce. Why? Because marriage is a good example of salvation. Christ loved us, that he laid his, his life down for us. And we are supposed to be submissive to Christ. That's why the wife is an example of the church. And uh, the husband is an example of Christ. Christ loved us so much that he had to lay his life for us. Us, the church. That's how our, her husband should be. And the wife should submit so much, knowing that she's uh, not in the same level with Christ, but they love each other so much. And that's why when you see the, the world today, nowadays, is trying to change things and trying to, you know, this equality, and they're trying to say, you know, a woman can be above the man and uh, they can be equal. It's, it's trying to destroy what God has put. Something so beautiful. Can you say that you're above Christ as a member of the church? Can Christ be below the church? It can't be. And when you're getting into a marriage, you first understand, what am I getting into? It is forever. First, you have to understand the person that you're about to love and the person that you, have to co you want to commit to. And that's exactly what salvation is. First, you understand Christ. You say, okay, this is the person that I want to spend all my life with, Christ. Who is he? Why am I spending my life with him? What did he do for me? He gave me. He gave me his life. The same way a husband will, will, uh, will be, uh, you see, a wife will remember how uh, before he got married to this uh, husband, the, 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 the husband was giving her gifts and doing this and this and good things until the day that she accepted. She was checking. She was dating, checking, con confirming. Yes, is this, is this exactly how it's going to be? All these things, does it really mean good to me? 
That is why first before you get saved, you have to understand the gospel. You understand this person that I'm about to lay myself forever with him. How will it be? You understand. So that when you commit yourself, you take the ring and you commit yourself. Now what happens? It is forever. And you will not come out from the marriage. So when you see someone coming out from the marriage, like the Bible says here, it is made manifest that they were not with us. There are marriages out there which are fake. Have you seen them? Fake marriages? And you find people who did not even love each other in the first place. They were just together for the sake of a show. They did not even understand each other. That's why you see people say they backslidden. So if you love God and you have truly believed in him, you will commit to him. Okay? You will commit to him. Because a marriage is a commitment. And a marriage without commitment, then it doesn't work. That's why God gave us marriage here in, on earth so that we can be able to see a picture of Christ and the church together and how it is supposed to be, okay? And remember, God is a good judge and he has to punish the criminals, okay? He has to punish the criminals. So when you do wrong against him, he's going to punish you. But whoever wants to keep uh, because the Bible says, whoever wants to keep his life, he will lose it. Do not be like the world. You should deny yourself and pick up the cross daily. You see, if you want to keep your life, you're going to lose it. If you want to say, okay, I, 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 I don't want to be married to Christ because, you see, I love my life so much. I love to be single so much. Remember, a time is coming. All those who are single and out of and away from the marriage of Christ, they are going to be punished in hell. Because Christ created us and he, all he wanted us to be, he wanted us to be together with him. Okay? He wanted us to be together with him. To be joined here with God. That's the reason why we were created. So if you say, I want to stay without God, then uh, create yourself. Because God created us for one reason, so that we can have fellowship with him. But we have already, you know, we have already been separated by sin. So he wants us to get back again, so that we can be married again and have a relationship with him. So that he can be looking at us and he can be able to say, wow, these are my children. I love these people. This is the reason why we were created. You are not created to go work and, uh, you know, do all the things and build technologies and all those things that people think that is, that, that is why they were created. No, you are not created for that purpose. You are created to have a communion with God. And when he looks at you, he'll be just saying, wow, I love this person. And you can look back and say, wow, I love this person. For a relationship, that's why God created you. And if you don't want that, then uh, it's automatic. You'll be destroyed and, uh, you know, you have already sinned. You have already uh, beaten the purpose of why you were created. If you create a toy and all of a sudden you discover some wires are, are broken and, uh, you know, the tires are spoiled, what are you going to do? You're going to throw it in the pit because it is no, of no use. It's of no use. So whoever wants to save their life, they will lose it. But whoever loses their life, they will find it. The Bible says in Matthew 16, 24. Okay? Now, the Bible says something here. In the book of Luke 13, 23. Luke 13, 23. See what the Bible says here. Then said one unto him, somebody... Somebody just woke up uh, and he went uh, close to Christ and he said, somebody said unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? Are there just a few people who are on the narrow way like Christ? Do you really mean that uh, only few people are saved, will be saved? Is, is that what you mean? See what Jesus said. And he said unto them, strive to enter at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Many people will be seeking to enter in, but it will not be possible for them. When 
when uh, uh listen when once the master of the house is risen up and has shut the door and you begin to stand without and to knock the door saying lord lord open to us he shall answer and say unto you i know you not whence you are what is the bible trying to tell us here god is telling us that uh, you should strive to enter through that narrow gate the narrow way why because this is the way which leads to salvation and there are people who will walk through the broadway and think because I've done good and uh, I'm this kind of person, you know, I, 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 I give to the poor sometimes, I, I help the needy, I do this and this. I, I think I'm a good person. No, Jesus says, you already got broken. And the only way to be repaired is through what I did for you at the cross. And uh, for those people who will try to enter through the broad way, shall not be able you see what the bible says if you try to enter in another different way it's not possible you're not going to make it and lord will kick you out He'll close the door and when you're there saying lord lord please open to us he shall answer and tell you i know you not where you're coming from i don't know you i don't understand where you're coming from you see even the people of the world, they understand that Jesus is the highway to heaven. And that's why they're always making movies. I saw this, uh, it's a movie by, I think, uh, it's uh, in a Prime Videos. I don't know, Prime, Prime Movies, something like that. There's a movie called The Highway to Heaven. Why would these people be talking about heaven, heaven, heaven? And most of them are atheists. And they always say they don't believe in God. Because they know they know the highway to heaven is who? It's Jesus Christ. Let me show you what the Bible says. In the book of Isaiah 35, 8. Isaiah 35, verses 8. Isaiah 35, 8. It says, And an highway shall be there. There will be an highway. And a way. It shall be called the way of holiness. And the unclean shall not pass over it. It shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall err therein. There is a highway. What is that highway? Jesus Christ. This was prophesied by Isaiah years and years before even Jesus came. You see what the Bible is saying? That there will be a highway someday. And a way. Who is that way? The way is Jesus. It shall be called the way of holiness. The way of holiness. The unclean, the unsaved people, the people who are fake out there in the world, who pretend to be Christians, but they are not. They will not pass over it. But it shall be for those only, the, weary, the wayfaring men. Although fools shall err, Therein, there are others who will be trying to enter. They will be trying to walk, but they are erring. They, they are going away from that into a false broad way. If, if, if you, you see this very well, you can be able to tell who that highway is. Is Jesus. And... Uh, I don't know if you really understand and if you're really striving uh, if you're really striving to go through that way okay are you really striving to walk through that way the narrow path are you on the narrow path you see there are so many people many 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 people in the world right now who say that uh, they love God and they are good and uh, I know I'm going to heaven I'm on the uh, the way to heaven and I really pity many of them because many if not most of the people today who call themselves Christians will definitely burn in hell because you know God will tell them I never knew you many people who are in church today they're just going and they're they're on the broad way they're just going and they don't understand that they're they're lost 
See what the Bible says in Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Not everyone, my brothers and sisters, is not everyone. It's not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, I did this. Oh, Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, Lord. You see, many people confess and they say all those great things. Even these actors, they are saying the way to heaven, blah, blah, blah. You will see even them, some of them talking about Jesus and the others cursing and saying, oh, Jesus, wow. when maybe somebody uh, wants to curse and maybe he's fighting someone else and he's been beaten, you'll see, hear them say, Jesus, you know, oh, and, and when they want to curse and things like that, he's calling Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus doesn't mean they're going anywhere. Unless you understand which is the narrow way. And you walk in that narrow way. That's the only way you can be saved. You see, there are some people who will try to explain so much to Christ. You'll be trying to explain and telling, Lord, you see, you see, Christ, come on, you can't tell me that I won't enter. Come on, I remember you very well. See what the Bible says? Then shall you begin to say, we have eaten. And drank in your presence. Come on, Lord. We, we ate and drank in your presence. And thou hast taught in our streets. You are teaching sometime in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence you are, where you're coming from. Depart from me, all that work iniquity. You see, people will start complaining and telling Jesus, come on, Jesus. We, we, we used to eat the Lord's Supper. We used to, you know, pray for the sick. We used to uh, uh, prophesy and uh, cast out demons. Come on, Lord, you can't say that. You can't tell me uh, I, I was not in the narrow way. But he tells you, come on, all these things. You could have just searched very well and understood where you are. Because you are lost. You are really lost. And if you stay with me in this uh, uh, teaching, you, I'm going to tell you exactly how you can be sure that you're in the narrow path. And how you can be sure that you're heading to heaven. Because many are out here. Okay? So, if uh, you say you love Christ, if you say you love Christ and uh, you're saved and all those things that uh, people try to say, if you say all that, that you love Christ, and you're rebellious towards his word, then you're a fake, and you're a liar, and you're on the broad way. You can't say you love Christ and you don't keep his commands. What is the command of God? He commanded you to love. Full stop. This is the new command. And that command is written in our hearts the moment, the moment you're believed. But if you find yourself, just go and check uh, my other video which I taught, which was uh, is speaking about the spiritual Christian and another one uh, speaking about the carnal Christian. Of course, you can be a carnal Christian. You can find yourself, uh, you're, you're, you're a baby Christian, somebody who has never grown in the word. Of course, you will lose rewards, but you'll not lose your salvation. But if you're a, 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 you're a fake Christian, someone who, who pretends he believes, but he doesn't believe, then uh, it will be shown that in a clear way, when you don't keep his commands. You see, even a carnal Christian, a baby Christian, Think about just a general baby. A baby will always know that uh, even if I really love doing uh, wrong things to my father, but whenever he looks at me, he means this. He doesn't want me to do that. And a baby will understand because a baby is always chastised. He's always beaten by his father, corrected by his father. And the next minute, he will do what is right. Because God, being your father, he will correct you. And he will correct you in so many ways, in a way that... Uh, it will be so difficult for you to remain being a, a baby Christian or a carnal Christian. He will correct you so much. He may freeze all your accounts and freeze all your good times until you realize that you need to, you know. God has different ways of uh, correcting his children. But if you're not a child in the first place, then there's nothing to correct. There's nothing purely to correct. If you love God, you will keep his commandments. If you love God, 
you will enjoy when he's correcting you. And you will enjoy and you will want to do what is right to him. But if you don't, if you don't love Christ, then you will live like, uh, you know, the devil over the whole week. And on Sunday, you just go for, you know, to church as a PR to show the people, hey, guys, you see, did you see my new Mercedes Benz in church? You see, you, you guys, do you see what the Lord has done? It's just a way of flossing. There's nothing there. You just go to church. Many people go to church today just to show off. You know, to hook up with new chicks, hook up with new men in church. You know, just uh, show off, show bees. And those are the people who are on the broad way. The Bible tells us here, if you love me, John, John uh, 14, 23. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Okay, see. Jesus answered and said to him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Okay? So, if you love Christ, then keep his words. Keep his words. It's really, really important. Okay? Look at uh, the book of Luke also. Luke. Um, 6 uh, 46 see what uh, Jesus is saying here and why call me why call ye me Lord Lord and do not and uh, do not the things which I say you don't do the things which I say and you're here calling me Lord Lord why why do you call me Lord and uh, you, you there's nothing which you're doing according to my will you don't do anything And uh, let me let me let me just show you something here. The Bible tells us to examine ourselves. Examine. Take off your head. I'm not just selling you, you 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 cut your head like this guy here. But I'm saying examine yourself. Is is the life that you're living according to the Bible? According to all the Bible says we live. Do you live that way? You see, there are some people who think that they are saved, but they were planted in lies. There are preachers out there who are preaching, but they are preaching lies. And they are telling people, okay, this is a blah, 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 and this is how you say, and, and they are giving them some very big lies, and they are planted them in lies. Examine yourself. Personally, myself, I was planted in lies for over 30 years. I thought that because I said a sinner's prayer, I was saved. I thought because I give to the poor, I did do this and this and this, I was saved. And every day when people talk about the rapture, and they talk about the end times, and and the apocalypse and uh, Jesus is coming I was scared and I always praying and telling God please God do something if you're coming tomorrow make sure you scare me tonight so that I can uh, I can pray that prayer again I put my trust in a prayer not in Jesus Christ and what he did for me now that is being planted in a wrong doctrine and that's why the Bible says you need to examine your, uh, yourself. Let's see what the, uh, Paul said here in 2 Corinthians. You need to examine yourself. The day I examined myself, I came to realize, oops, Keith, I was lost, total lost, like a Robert Breaker always says, like a golf ball in high wheat. So lost. The Bible says, examine yourself, whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, that Christ is in you, except you be reprobates? Come on, examine yourself. See, see yourself. Ask yourself, am I, am I really saved? Examine yourself. Examine yourself and ask yourself, am I really saved? And God is going to show you if you're saved or not. He's going to explain to you. Now, let me show you something here in the book of Mark. Mark uh, 4.15. Mark 4.15. This is a very good, beautiful teaching to understand where you stand. Now, you see, Jesus said concerning uh, some people who are like a seed, which is planted along the path. And he says, and these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. 
And there are which are likewise sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root themselves. To endure for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises the, uh, for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And some people are planted on thorns. These are the ones which hear the word, okay? And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the last of the things enter in and choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. But there are some which are sown on good ground. These are the people who hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit. Some 34, some 60 and some 100. Now you may ask yourself, why is Jesus talking about this sower? He's saying that there are some people who have been planted, you know, in on rocks and they can't produce anything because they have no root. These are people who have been planted in some dry, wrong doctrine. They have just been told uh, the sinner's prayer and that's it. And they have been told when you say this prayer, that's it. Now they have no root. They don't even understand. What did I even pray? What did I even ask? I was pr planted in a rock like this, like this uh, you know, example. And there are some who are planted on thorns. These are people like uh, those who are in prosperity churches. You are told that, uh, you know, come to Christ. When you come to Christ, you'll have a, a new car, you'll have a new house, you know, you'll be successful. And when uh, the thorns start pricking you, because life is, is full of thorns, when uh, the thorns start coming up, when you start getting trials and tribulations and troubles, and you ask yourself, why, how comes... I was not promised these things. Why am I being choked? And you lose. And others are planted in where? Uh, it was the, the rocks, the, the thorns, others on, on the ground, you know, along the path. These are people who are just, uh, uh, they are told something, but they don't even understand what it was. You just saw a multitude. A preacher comes, he preaches all a story about Moses, and then at the end of the day he says, how many want to ask Jesus into their hearts? You ask Jesus into your heart, but then you don't understand, what have I really done? Is it, is it what we call salvation? And then a few days later, your friends come. And they tell you, now you're saying you're saved? Come on, let's go. They pick you up from the ground and fly with you. And they take you back to the old base where you are. But there are some who are planted in good soil. These are people who have been told why Jesus had to lay his life for the sin of the world. Why Jesus had to do this. And those are the people who mature and they become big. And they grow in the faith. Are you planted there? Because many people are planted along the way. Others on prosperity, others on rocks. That's why all this is the wide path to hell. They think they are planted but they are not. But only a few are planted in the right soil. And the, those are the only ones who mature and will be seeing the kingdom of God. You see, the outside, from the outside there are people who appear to be righteous. But from the inside they are full of wickedness and hypocrisy. And I want to show you this verse so that we can discuss for just a bit. I'm almost winding up. Matthew uh, 23, verse 28. See what the Bible says. Even so, you are outwardly appear righteous unto men. Do you see most people in church nowadays, they appear so righteous unto men when they're in church, when they're wearing that suit. And they're holding that uh, new Bible, which has no scratches. Actually, when you see somebody and his Bible is always very clean and neat, they, when do they read it? A true Bible should be full of, uh, you know, uh, shadings and writings and markings because it shows that you read it. But many people in church nowadays, they are so neat and so clean to appear righteous unto men. But within themselves, they are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. And they are the same people, just the same way the hypocrites, Pharisees were like. See what Jesus told these Pharisees? Who want to use scribes and Pharisees? Hypocrites. Because you build, 
you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sculptures of the righteous. And you say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we will not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Where, wherefore, you are witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children of them which kill the prophets. You people, see, see what Jesus said. You serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? God sent you prophets, he sent you people, preachers to tell you the truth. But what did you do? You don't want to listen. You are like whitewashed tombs. I don't know where is that verse. Christ tells them very well that they are, they are like whitewashed tombs. Outside they are really good, but inside they are full of bones of dead people. Come on. Come on, my friends. Come on. Understand where you're planted. Are you planted on the narrow path or the wide path? Don't you know? Let me show you this. Don't you know something here? James. James 4 verses 4. What does he say? For those people who say they are Christians but they are living like the devil. See what the Bible is saying. You adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is the enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God? You want to live like the world. You want to live like the way the world lives. Don't you know you're like this kind of people? You claim to be, you know, married to Christ. But you're still playing with the world. Still. It's like, uh, you know, you're being cr married to Christ. You're ready now, you know, you're one with Christ. You say that you're saved, but you're still flirting with the world. Don't you know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? There's no way God is, Jesus is going to love you if you're still flirting with the world out there. It's not going to happen. It means you never even loved him in the first place. And I'm not saying you can lose your salvation, but I'm showing you to understand that there are people who pretend that they are saved, but it's just lies. They're not. Let me show you what the Bible says, something here. It says in 1 John, 1 John uh, 3, 8. Uh, 1 John 3, 8. See what the Bible says here. He that committed sin is of the devil. If you keep on doing sinful things, it doesn't mean that uh, you cannot fall. You can find yourself you're fallen, but fall and wake up because a, 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 a righteous man falls so many times and still wakes up. But if you keep, you're there 24-7 sinning, then uh, there's a possibility you are of the devil. You never even believed in the first place. He that committed sins of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning all the time. Since the beginning, even when you said you are saved. You are keeping on sinning over and over and over and over. You, you, you're living like the devil. You, you're of the, of the devil because he kept on sinning from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he's born of God. Do you know that if you're a child of God, you cannot sin? Yes, you will find yourself doing wrongful things. But Christ always corrects you because now it's not you that sin. It is the, the body, the flesh of sin, which is sinning, which will be redeemed. But if you find yourself 24-7, you're enjoying it, and you're not feeling any conviction to walk in the ways of righteousness, then um, there's a possibility you've never even been saved. You've never even been saved. It's very, very possible. So you may ask, how can we know and how can we be known by God? Okay, how can we know and how can we be known by God? How can we say, God now knows me and I know God and I know I'm on the narrow path? How can you be on the narrow path? How can you say, the Lord now, I am sure, 100% sure that I'm going to heaven? Because the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us, Something here in uh, let me check. Uh, it's it's uh, I want to check this verse. It's in Peter, the book of Peter. Is it Peter or 
It says here very well that uh, there is a possibility. Oh yeah, it's in John, sorry. Second John. Second John. See, see what uh, the Bible says. Second John uh, chapter what? Chapter 5 verse 13. Second John 5:13. See what the Bible says here. The Bible says mm, Ah, sorry, First John. I'm sorry about that. First John uh, 5, uh, 5.13. See what the Bible says here. These things I've written unto you that you believe that that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. And that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Do you know that? You can know that you have eternal life. And how can you know that you have eternal life? What is what's going to make you understand that for sure I'm on the narrow path and I have eternal life? Because the Bible has said you can know. You may ask Keith, what shall we do? I've heard all those stories and I, and, and I, I know that they're, they're really confusing. Now, let's see what the Bible says in uh, John the book of John concerning what you should do John 2:29 this is what you should do so that you know you have eternal life Jesus answered and said unto them this is the work of God that you believe on him whom he has sent this is the whole work this is everything that you need to do you need to believe on whom he has sent and when you believe on whom he has sent then you're going to know 100% that you're on the narrow path and you're heading to heaven. How will you believe? You see the people saying, how do, how do I know? How will I believe the right way, Keith? Come on. How will I believe the right way? Jesus said, the only way you can believe is through understanding the gospel. Okay? Understand the gospel. And let, let me take you slowly so that you can understand. Ephesians Ephesians uh, 1 13 Ephesians 1 13 it says in whom you also trusted so there's someone that you need to trust okay there's someone you need to trust in whom also you trusted after that you heard the word of truth there's something that you need to hear you need to trust after you hear you have to trust someone after you hear and that's why it's very important for you to hear what are you hearing the word of truth the gospel of your salvation. Ah, so I have to hear the gospel. Huh? In almost after that you believed, so you hear and you believe. Then what happens after you believe? You are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So if there's something that you need to hear so that you can trust a certain man. And the moment you trust that person, then you are sealed. You get the Holy Spirit in you. So what is the work of that Holy Spirit? Why is he being sealed in me? Because the Bible says he is the earnest of our inheritance. Oh, there is something that will inherit in heaven. Okay. He is the earnest. He is our security of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession and to the praise of his glory. He is the earnest. He is keeping. He is there assuring us of salvation until the time that we are redeemed and now we go and inherit completely and we will be able to see it. So, you need to hear something. And you have been told is the gospel of your salvation is what you need to hear. And after you hear, you understand and you believe it. And then you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So what is the gospel? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15 verses 1 through 4. And it says, okay, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. You see, Paul is telling us, this is the gospel which I'm declaring to you. Nothing else. This is the gospel. Gospel means what? It means good news. I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you. So it means Paul preached this gospel before. And of course, we're in the first Corinthians. He's been preaching all through and through. Romans and all. He's been preaching all through. Which also you have received. Uh -huh. So this gospel, you have to receive it. How do you receive it? By faith. By faith. Believing in it. Believing this good news. Understanding and believing. And wherein you stand. So you are standing on this gospel. You are not standing on your good works. 
you see most of the people who are on the uh, wide path the wide path they are standing on their good works they are standing on what they have done they are standing on uh, 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 their good deeds they are standing on this and that they are standing on different things they are standing on how they give their tithes they are standing on how they help the needy they are standing on but now you stand on the gospel you stand on this good news of what jesus did to you moreover brethren i declare unto you the gospel which i preached unto you which also you have received and wherein you stand aha uh -huh. let's continue by which also you are saved now this is the gospel which saves you aha uh -huh. how does it save you how does it save you if you keep in memory what I preached unto you unless you have believed in vain? So the only way you can be saved is by keeping it in memory. Understanding. And how do you keep something in memory? When you understand it. Remember when you were in school, your teacher used to tell you, don't cram that formula. Please understand it so that it can remain in your mind. But most people nowadays, they can narrate the whole Bible, but they don't know the gospel. And they are not saved. Mentioning Lord, Lord and saying all these things cannot make you saved. Unless you understand, it's only when it will come into your mind. And from your heart, mind, it will go down to your heart. Because this is from the heart that we believe, not from our minds. And something can only go to your heart. You see, when it goes to your heart, it means it's something now you believe in. If there's a formula which you were taught in school, and you understood it and you kept it in memory... It went from the mind to the heart. And you believe 100% that formula is true. That's exactly how the gospel is. Which you're saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believe in vain. For I deliver unto you first that which I also received. Uh -huh. Paul is telling us, I'm not giving you something different. I'm giving you what I first received. When did Paul receive this gospel? In the book of Galatians, chapter 1, verse 11, 12, it says where Paul received this gospel. It was from a revelation of Jesus. Jesus revealed it to him. Remember when Paul was heading to Damascus to go and persecute the church? Okay? And he was transformed. And later on, he went to the deserts of Arabia and he was taught by Christ for 14 years. Revealed the gospel for 14 years and then he came back to preach. Now, he was revealed by Christ. So Paul is telling us, I deliver unto you first that which I also received. How? This is very important. How? How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. How did Jesus die? Jesus died by shedding his blood. He shed his blood at the cross. Why was the blood important? Because the Bible says in Hebrews that without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. There is no remission of sins. Why do you have to shed blood? For you to be forgiven. Because in Leviticus 17.11 it says, The life of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given you the blood to make atonement for your souls upon the altar. Okay? So it is only the blood which can make atonement. Why? Why do we need to shed blood so that we can, you know, the life of the flesh is in the blood? Why should I remove the life? It is because the Bible says, The wages of sins, the wages of sin is death. And you have already sinned against God. So you deserve to die. Very simple, very clean. You have to understand this. But while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The Bible says that. While we were still sinners, Jesus did this for us. So us understanding how Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures is very crucial for us to be able to be saved. How did Jesus die? He died by shedding his blood. So we have faith in that blood that he shed. For our forgiveness of sins. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day. According to the scriptures. This is the whole gospel. When you understand how Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day. According to the scriptures. Then you are saved my friends. You are sealed. Sa saved and sanctified. And ready for the rapture. And now you are on the narrow way. Many people don't know that it's about understanding how Jesus died and why he died. He died for your sin. While you are yet sinners, Jesus died for you. But many people are on the broad path thinking that it's because of our good deeds that we are going to heaven. The Bible says that our righteousness is as filthy rags unto God. 
God does not even look at your righteousness and say you're, it's anything. It says it's filthy rags. When he looks at it, you're trying to show your good works to enter heaven with your good works. He's like, please don't show me those filthy rags. It is only through this narrow path, understanding how Christ died for your sins and why he died. He had to shed his blood because without that shedding of that blood, you could not have gotten salvation. So Jesus created a path for you to be able to be reconciled with, with God. And when you, when you believe, when you pass through Christ, you receive uh, what he did for you at the cross. When you receive this by faith, then now he has made a way for you. And now you're on the right path, the narrow path towards heaven. And then, of course, after you do that, confess to God. Confess to him what you believed. You see, first is understanding. Second is believing. And third, then you tell Christ what you have believed. Why? Because the Bible tells us here in Romans, in Romans uh, 10 verses, Nine, the Bible tells us something here. If you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that the Lord has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Why do you have to confess? So that you tell him what you have already believed. Can you confess what you don't know? Can you confess what you don't know? You go to a court of law and start confessing that you saw the thief and you never saw him. You confess what you know. For with the heart a man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth a confession is made unto salvation. So confess to Christ what you believe. Tell him, Christ, I know, Jesus, thank you. Thank you because you died for my sins and you were buried and rose again according to the scriptures. I believe that you did that for me, and now I am delivered. I am saved by that blood that you have shed for me. Because the Bible says here, just look down here. Verse 13, Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You see, there are people who just come here and they say, okay, let me open my mouth and call. The way I used to say the sinner's prayer every day. But I had never heard the gospel, neither understood it, neither believed it. I, just, I was just saying some prayers. No. You call the name of the Lord when you have understood the gospel. You tell him what you have understood. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? You see, believing is the first thing, and then you call later on. How can they believe in him whom they have not heard? Before you believe, you have to hear something. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Thank God for Robert Breaker. I was uh, watching online, and I saw this guy called Robert Breaker, and, uh, and uh, he, he was preaching about the gospel. And I heard the gospel. I heard the gospel, and I thank God for that. And every day, I'm growing in the word of God because I heard through a preacher. And then I believed and then I confessed to God what I believed. And of course, not every person there who just says, oh, you see, you see, uh, uh, listen, listen to me. It, it's not like that. Remember Paul, the gospel that he was preaching, he was given by Christ. And everyone who says that uh, he's following Christ, he must also follow Paul. Paul says, follow me for I follow Christ. You see, I cannot be listening to the Apostle Paul or listening to Breaker if he doesn't follow Paul. Because the Bible says, how shall they preach except they be sent? Who sent the person? You see, there are people who have sent themselves. You have to be sent. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. And bring glad tidings of good things. So they have to be sent. You have to be following Paul who is following Christ. Christ who gave him the, the word. I'm not praising Paul. I'm not praising uh, all these other guys. But I'm saying you must hear uh, the gospel from a verified person who understands the gospel. Because I've been in church for over 30 years. And I've never understood the gospel even once. I was there thinking that my two sentences, three sentences which I said, they saved me. I never knew that it was by the word, the work of the cross which Jesus did is what saved me. It's not about me. It was what Jesus did. And if, if you understand this, my friends, you will be saved and you will be on the narrow path. Examine yourself and do what is right. Hope this has been a blessing to you.
if you like this video please give it a, a, a thumbs up and also you can share the video so that others can be able to be saved and be on the narrow path and also you can subscribe i always post at least two videos every day teaching and edifying the brothers and sisters in christ please learn the word of god keep on learning keep on researching you cannot grow in one day hope you'll be uh reading the word and understanding this because it's really important to know on which way are you god bless you and have a blessed time